Hey guys, welcome to the shop. You know, there's several reasons why a person may want to index the spindle on their lathe. You know, they may want to do a multiple start thread. They may want to cut splines on the outside of a shaft. Or they may want to hold the spindle stationary and cut a keyway in a pulley or something. There are several different reasons why. I'm glad you're here. I'm going to show you my method. So let's get started. Okay, first thing we're going to cover is multiple start threads. Now this machine comes from the factory with an indexing ring on the back of the spindle to aid in adjusting, you know, in, you know, several different uh, orientations. That way you can lock it in at a third or a sixth or whatever you need to lock it in at. It's got some graduations on the back on a collar that is used for this purpose. So for this video, we're just going to cut a generic three start thread. We're not going to try to get it to any specific dimensions or anything. This is just for, uh, you know, just to, so you can see how it's done. We got a piece of stock here and it's blued up. So let's cut the first thread. And on this lathe, if you want to do a multiple start thread, you will cut the thir first thread as if you weren't going to do a multiple start at all. You can start at any position, you know, uh, on the spindle, it doesn't matter. It will be considered zero. So, let's cut this first thread, and then we'll index to the second. Okay guys, first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut our first thread, of course. And we're going to do three threads per inch, and of course a three start thread. So, let's cut this first thread, and then I'll show you how I index to the number two thread. Now, let's just uh, pretend for a minute that uh, this was, we wanted a high lead per revolution, and this was all we were going to do. Well, there's not much thread there, you know, for such a, uh, you know, big bolt, uh, you know, and, a, and it doesn't, one single thread on such a high lead per revolution does not give us much thread strength. So that's really the real benefit of a multiple start thread will be giving us, you know, a high lead per revolution and a strong thread. So I'm going to bring you down and show you how I index to the next thread. Okay, we cut our first thread. Here's our graduation ring on the back. This is the back of the lathe and the back of the spindle and this is the graduation ring that gives me, you know, uh, my graduations as far as where to index my spindle. On most lathes you have two sets of gears. You have a gear set that controls the main gearing that controls the rotation of the spindle and then that is tied to the gearing that controls the lead screw or your quick change gearbox. The first thing that I do to index this spindle, you know, a third, because I'm going to do a three start thread, is that I disengage the gear set inside of the headstock. And the only reason I do that is because I don't want to have to, when I rotate the spindle by hand, I don't want to have to turn all the gears in this thing because it's not necessary. We're still tied directly through the spindle down to the, the quick change gearbox. This little handle here disengages the spindle gear, which is here, from the quick change gearbox. So all I have to do is Rotate this spindle to zero, so it gives me a good clear starting point. Then I disengage 
my gear train into my quick change gearbox and I rotate the spindle exactly one third on this collar. And I've got a little line on my casting here that lines up. Let me bring you in a little closer and hopefully give you a better idea of what's going on here. You probably can't make out the numbers, but you know they're just a, a dividing a circle, you know, into certain parts. So we've moved from zero to a third. So now we want to re-engage our quick change gearbox. So basically all we've done is disconnect the quick change gearbox, rotate the spindle exactly one third, and re-engage it. That's all we've done in order to get the next start. So let's cut this thread and then we'll do the next one. Okay, we've set our spindle, we've rotated it a third. We, you know, we of course we got our first thread cut. Now let's cut the second one. First we'll just go over it and make sure we're in the right position. Put our headstock back in gear. We are correct. So now we've cut both thread one and thread two, and we want to move on to our final thread number three. So again, I disengage my headstock gears simply for the reason that I don't want to have to, you know, turn them by hand. We're still engaged through our lead screw. And we're going to run over here to zero. That's was thread number one. Then to our third mark, which is thread number two, was thread number two. Now we're going to disengage from our thread number two and move to the final third mark. And we engage. Let me bring in a little closer. I hope you can see that, you know. So all we're, you know, we've just got zero. Here's a third mark and then here's a third mark. So, you know, this just splits this spindle up into three sections and if I take this cover off the only thing that's behind it is you know a gear set you know with I forget like 30 something teeth on it and theoretically you know we could disengage this uh, and you know by hand and split this spindle up into ever how many teeth this gear has once we cut this final thread I'll pull this cover and I'll show you what I mean Okay, now let's cut this final thread. We'll first we'll do a check and then we'll cut. And yep, that looks right. pretty good. I'm going to clean this up a little. We'll take it over the bench and we'll look at it. Okay, here is our part. 
and uh, you can see we have three starts you know one here one here and one here and let's say this was uh, instead of a solid piece like it is let's say this was a thin walled piece of pipe and, and you couldn't cut a deep thread into it you know without cutting you know without uh, weakening the part but you still needed a high lead you know per revolution of the, of the nut well that's where a multiple start thread would come in you know is that uh, you don't have to have as deep a thread you know in order to, to get the strength because now we have three threads here imagine if this was only one thread with such a high lead angle well they'd almost be no strength on the thread you know unless if it was a thin walled piece of pipe so there's a few different benefits to a, a multi-start thread and that's one of them and they're not that hard to do you just have to be able to index your spindle and it just so happens that on the lathe that I have it's pretty easy because uh, it has a graduation collar on the back but let's go look at the back of this lathe and just pretend that it doesn't have one on it I would show you another way that I would indicate the spindle Okay, guys. Here's a look with the covers off, and and all this is the main. Hold on, get this. Here. This here is a 36 tooth gear, and it is the main gear off the spindle that powers the drive train for the lead screw. So that little handle that I was manipulating, that all that does is move this gear either in mesh or out of mesh with this main gear. So now the lead screw's powered. Now it's not. Let me bring you in just a little closer. okay you can see we have our graduation collar here and you know this this being a 36 tooth gear you know we could uh, do a 36 start thread if we wanted to all we would do is you know we would start our thread anywhere just like we did you know uh, with our one that we cut then we would disengage move one tooth and go back in and then you know and the same thing over and over and over again until we got a 36 star thread if you had a big enough part but that's the idea so I can do anywhere from 1 to 36 threads with this machine by just you know moving a tooth or two uh, you'd have to do the math to figure out what you you need but that's how I do it on this lathe I've got another way of indexing so I'm going to put this back together and then I'll show you that okay now here's a part that I took a little time to make and basically and it's an index plate and it's got 60 50 40 36 29 and 16 you know um, of course the highest number on the outside going to the lowest on the inside this is just an index plate that I that I made and I made it on an expanding collet or I, I made this collet out of an old Actually, I made it out of an old gas regulator, old brass gas regulator, and turned a couple tapers, and, and it slides into the back of my spindle. And then you tighten the nut down, and that expands the collet and locks it in the spindle. And then you install the lock, or the uh, actual selector, and then you can index this way. You know, and and I've done this, you know, to uh, you know cut splines on shafts, and uh, you know this just goes. Well, this is all tight; it lines up well. But, but then it locks your spindle in place, you know, and then you can disengage and spin the whatever number of holes that you want, and uh, you know reengage. when this is all tight it works actually really well and I've used it multiple times but uh, you know this is something that takes a little time to build let's get you in a little closer on it you know it takes a little time to build but it's uh, in my opinion you know it's a lot cheaper than a than a rotary table and a milling machine combination that's for sure um, and if you have the time and, and you want to practice you know, this is a good exercise. It was for me, I built this several years ago, probably, you know, five years, six years ago, when I didn't own, you know, uh, all the other equipment. And, 
and I've used it multiple times if you wanted to spline a shaft doing or do some broaching you know on the on the lathe using your carriage and you know as a as the movement for the tool um, and locking your spindle in place uh, with the plates you know and, and you don't have to have any real major uh, equipment to make the dividing plates either I think people you know, especially if they're going to be used on a lathe where it's not super precision anyway, you know, you're locking the back of the spindle. You can make a set of, uh, or a dividing plate with just a simple set of uh, traveling dividers, you know, and a little time. So uh, any of this stuff can be made by anyone if they want to put forth the effort to do it. But, uh, and this that's the way that I uh, index, uh, you know, uh, the spindle to lock it if I want to do work out of the chuck you know of course you know indexing with the gearing and the gear train and the, uh, of the lead screw all that does is like if I want to cut multiple starts you know it doesn't lock the spindle if you want to index where the spindle is held in a stationary position you can move it as uh, you can clock the spindle to you know any any position you would have to you know make you something like this in order to, to do that. But, uh, but yeah, that's it. Well guys, that's it. Pretty easy. Somewhat hard to film and very hard to explain, but the idea is easy. This slave has a 36 tooth output gear, which allows me, as long as I can disengage it, allows me to break a circle into 36 positions. I can do a 36 start thread on this or anything in between. But, if I want to do splines and lock the spindle, now that's a different story, then I have to go to something like this, which allows me to lock the spindle. And this index plate here will allow me to break a circle into 60 positions. If you haven't, like and subscribe. And remember, for every new like and every subscriber, I'll save a butterfly from a spider web, and I think that's pretty important. Don't you? Thanks, I'll see you next time.